compared to you oh god you are a good good father you are wonderful redeemer savior friend you are a good father hallelujah amen 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 you may be seated praise the lord happy father's day to all fathers 
Now, you don't have to have a biological child to be a father. Many of you are fathers in so many ways. Amen? So, don't know what is going on. You know, sometimes I just show up and things are ready, so I don't know the procedures. That's a good thing. That you have people that can work behind the scenes and you don't have to do anything. Just show up. Amen? It's a good thing. So I like all fathers to stand. You don't have to have a biological child to stand. I like all fathers to stand. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Yes, let's give a big hand to fathers. Come on. Let's give a big hand to them. And I would like you to come up here. Just come up here. I won't keep you standing for a long time. Come up here, please. And then I'll have uh, Karen come and uh, run the show here for a little bit. Hallelujah. I said you don't have to have a biological child to have be a father. Many of you are fathering many people without even knowing you're fathering them. Amen. Come on, Timothy, you're a father. Pastor Farmer, come up here too. Hallelujah. Okay, let me, let me rephrase. All men, come up here. <laughs> I mean, unless, you know, we live in a country where you want to be a woman, unless you want to be a woman, you can stay up. But if you're a guy, come up here. Did you hear what I said? All men, come up here. Two, come up here. <laughs> Only those that want to be women can stay. All men, come up here. Hallelujah. And it's so difficult to <laughs> give instructions. So difficult. Huh? You know. Amen. These are men. These are fathers. These are fathers to be. These are already fathers. These are grandfathers. Grandfathers to be. When God created the nation, one of the first things that he told Abraham is, I will make you father. I will make you. Oh, I have made you father. Not just father to your kids, but he said father to the nations. As the father goes, so the nation goes. I know we've put blame on the new generation, but really we don't look at the fathers. So when you have fathers that come to church, that believe God, that want to do things. They may not be perfect. They may make mistakes. They may go astray one or another day and they come back and you keep praying for them. So I want us to stretch our hands to these fathers. Stretch our hands and I want to pray. I want you to pray like your father was standing right here. Father, we thank you for these men and women. In fact, I want... Um, uh, Minister Paula to come and I need a mic from somebody. I need a mother to pray and I need also uh, yes, thank you. And uh, I need um, Angela to come. I want you to stretch. I want you to pray for these fathers. I want you to pray that God will anoint you. I'll pray first and then you pray and then you give the, the, the mind to Angela. Blessed Holy Spirit, we thank you. Father, in your presence there is joy. Father, you are the one that is making these fathers into fathers. Lord, I pray that your kingdom come upon them. Your will be done upon them. Father, I pray that they will excel in all things. These fathers of faith, grandfathers, fathers to be. Father, I pray that nothing will, will disturb or distract them in every way. Jehovah, I pray that may your power come upon them. Young, oh God, those that are young fathers, young men, middle age, older men, whatever the age is, Jehovah. Let your power come upon them. 
Let your power come upon them. Let them interact with you. Let them get, you know, let them get, oh God, wisdom from you, the, the giver of all wisdom. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Go ahead, Father. Jesus. Father, my Father, our Father, we lift up this fathers right now in the name of Jesus, God. I'm asking you to move by your Holy Spirit, Lord, in their lives, God. Lord, also let them know that they always have a father that they can go to. Yes. To make their request known, God. That whatever's in their heart, whatever's trouble that they have, Lord. Yes. That they can come to you, who is their father. Yes. Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus over them. Yes. Cover them wherever they go, God. Order their footsteps, Lord, in Jesus' name, God. Remind them that you are the true and living God. I bind the spirit of distraction yes. that come upon them in the name of Jesus, Father. Lord, I pray that you give them eyes of understanding. Father, even in raising their children, give them wisdom in Jesus' name. Lord, I also pray, God, that you will give them wealth so that they can make it. Yes. They don't understand how sometimes that's a, a, Jesus. a problem sometimes with some men, God, that I pray that they will seek to you, Father, yes, Lord. in Jesus' name. And that they will continue to walk by faith and not by sight. Lord, I pray healing be upon them. Their bodies get down in their inward yes. hearts. Yes, Lord. In their inward beings, Father. And deliver them, God. And, oh, God, I pray that they will be quick to repent. Quick to repent. Lord, I messed up. Help me, God. In the precious of Jesus' name, Father. And, oh, God, I pray that you develop in them a strong prayer life, God. Strong yes, Lord. prayer life, God. But, oh, Lord, I pray that their faith, God, will not fail in thee, God. Bless them and keep them, God. All, God, for your glory. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. You are good. Hallelujah. Come into your presence, Lord. Yes, Lord. We enter your gates with thanksgiving. We enter your courts with praise. We sing praises, men. Yes, Lord. Men of God, raise them up. Yes, yes, Lord. Strengthen them. Use them for what you created them for. And not what this world says they are. Yes. Passivity must go. Strength, your strength. You created them to be leaders. You created them to be strong. You created them to be the rocks of our families. Let them be so. Lord, use them. Guide them. Let them submit to you and what you have for them. Because it's not all about you, Lord. It's not about any of us. It's not about us. It's about you and your kingdom. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Let them submit their lives to you and be used by you. Lord, we praise you. We thank you. Bless everyone. Bless your families through these days. Use them for your kingdom. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. Let's give a big hand to the Lord for the fathers. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Okay, now we have some prizes. And I'm not, should I sit down? You're going to give out? Okay. Where's the mic? I can't hear you. Go ahead, tell them what, what we're doing. Stay up here. Okay. <laughs> and we're going to uh, hand out the bags to the Olympians. Okay. And then afterwards. We're going to give this. Okay, yes. great. Great. Great, 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 great. Happy Father's Day to everybody. Thank you for being part of the kingdom of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. You're going to receive a gift. Uh, 
I hope we have enough. <laughs> yeah, I hope we have enough. Hallelujah. You are a good, good father. Who you are. And I'm loved by you. Who I am is who I am. What's it that? What's it that? All right, fathers, you can take your seats. Yeah, let's give a God give them a big hand. You are perfect in all your ways. worship team. Hallelujah. Yeah, you can sit. Happy Father's Day again. You know, messages on such days can be controversial, can be good, but I'd like to acknowledge my good friend, Pastor Delton Farmer from North Carolina, Please stand. He pastors a church in uh, North Carolina. He's uh, actually is one of uh, my brother-in-law's best friends. He was at my wedding where I cried. He witnessed all that. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> and... Um, Today being Father's Day, we'd like all our children to stay in. I promise you, I won't be boring. You won't have to draw anything. You'll be... And I'd also like to, like to acknowledge uh, my good friend here, uh, Minister Jonathan, Jonathan Haskins. Please stand. Amen. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Anyone visiting with us? Nobody is visiting, which means you're not doing a good job. Happy Father's Day. Um, we're going to receive an offering later on. But you know, me, let, me sh let me show you something. Two nights ago, I was asking the Lord for $4,000 for a project. So this morning, somebody gave me $500 cash. They send me a text, and we got something for you. You know, being fathers, they thought it was a twenty-five dollar gift card to bus draw, go for something. Oh, give me five grand. I'm like, oh, hey, keep this. Don't let anybody knock you down. Hallelujah. My wife could not be with us today. She is um, in North Carolina, spending time with um, our biolo in her biological father there. Amen. But I want us today's message. And uh, Caleb, if you are recording, start now. Hallelujah. So today's message is making of a father. Making of a father. Hallelujah. I also to acknowledge uh, my good friend. Uh, Gerald and, uh, and his family here. Thank you for being here, sir. Where's Candace? 
working? That's why, you know, we have to create our own businesses where people don't work on Sundays. Making of a father. Um, so in Genesis chapter 17, and Caleb, I may give you a, a script that I did not send you. Genesis chapter 17, verse 4. So here the Lord is talking. As for me, as for me, and he's saying, no, make no mistake, as for me. That's what God is saying. Behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. That's where it starts from. Father of many nations. Don't limit yourself to your biological children as, your, as, your, as a father to them. Build, open your mind, open your vision wide. Look at yourself as a father of many nations. As the nation goes, as the father goes, so the nation goes. I know there is a blame on uh, this generation. Oh, this generation is no, this generation is not like our generation, but we don't realize how is it that this generation is the way it is? What did we do to it? What did we do to this generation? Did we sit down and train them in the ways of the Lord? Did we sit down and made our kids memorize scriptures? We can complain all day long about this generation. And fathers, it all comes down to you. When Eve ate the fruit, God did not call Eve. God called Adam. Adam! Where are you? Why? Because it comes down on fathers. I know there is a generation, there is movement that is, move, that is coming up over women this. But guess what? It's not biblical. As much as we love our women, as much as we are called to be co-heirs in, in the kingdom, they are not men. That's just the way it is. So you can add it all, oh, oh, me too movement and women movement, mention it. But when the father are out of place, the whole nation is out of place. Now verse 5. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abraham, but thy name shall be called, shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. And keep that there. If I made thee. I have made you. Here's the question. Listen. The word made or make is form, build, produce, fabricate, create, fashion, or mold. How many men are willing to go through the process of being made, being molded, being fabricated? It is not pretty to be fabricated. Fabrication will go through fire. Molded. It's not always pretty to be molded. How many men can stand up and say, Lord, make me. We sing songs. Make me a vessel. We don't even understand what that means sometimes. Fabricate. Mold. Create. Fashion. When you're making dinner, it's not always pretty in the beginning. You've got stuff chopped up. You've got everything everywhere. Some stuff don't even smell good. But when the dinner is done, it's all good. You can smell 
the chitlings. You can smell. <laughs> you can smell. You can smell <laughs> the food. You know, somebody gave me, a, a friend of mine gave me some fish from Ghana. Oh, it stank so bad. It stank so bad. But it tasted good. Okay. <laughs> the cooking of it. Oh. So making dinner, making something does not smell good. It's like you are even painting. If you are painting this, you come in, everything is everywhere. But when the finished product is done, like, oh, wow, this is good. So when God is making you, if everything does not look good, but he's molding you, he's carrying you, he's shaping you, he's chopping away friends and he's chopping away habits and he's getting you ready to be a father. It is not pretty all the time. But there's that resistance of being made. The only difference is whatever you are cooking does not resist you. Now, for you and me, we have a choice to make ourselves available, to put myself on a chopping board that God will chop out everything that is not of him. To put myself through the fire that whatever is not of God will be burnt out of me so that I can be a father. I have made thee. I have made thee. Hallelujah. John chapter 5. I did not give you this, Caleb. Verse 16. John chapter 5, verse 16. You know, the Bible has everything we need. John chapter 5, verse 16, not 6. Okay. Are you sure that's what it is? John chapter 5, verse 16. 16. Are you sure that's what it is? John chapter 5, verse 16. No, that's not it. That's not John. There you go. Don't confuse me. Don't think like, what am I, what do I, what do I see? You know, this, this thing of copy and paste, you know, you are, then you are copying. You may paste something else, you know, like, then they get confused. All right, now, I want you to see this, and I want you to see where the problem is as fathers. Therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him. Why? I want you to see this. Why did they want to kill him? Because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. Alright. He broke the law. He was not supposed to heal anybody on Sabbath day. So they were supposed to kill him on the Sabbath day. But what else? Why else did they want to kill him? Let's go to verse... Um, 17, verse 17, Jesus answered them, My father worked here to I work. Now listen to that statement. For the first time ever, a man refers to God as his father. Never before. There's nowhere in the New Test in the Old Testament where any man called God the Father. Nowhere. The way God is, is represented, Pastor Roy, in the Old Testament is the God of my father. Solomon, the God of my father, David. The God of my father, Abraham. All throughout the scriptures is referred to as God of my father. God of my father. No one had the guts to say, God is my father. Nobody. Because they never had that revelation. Jesus comes on the scene. And Jesus calls him my father. And the Jew, the people are annoyed and upset. Jesus answered them, my father. He took ownership. My father. Not the father of my... No, no, no. My father. My father. For the first time, he brings that revelation as my father. 
verse 18. Therefore, look at that. The Jews sought the more to kill him because he not only had broken the Sabbath but said also that God, also that God, that also that God, keep on, was his father. So, the spirit that wants to prevent in you a revelation that God is your father is still active today. And yet, it causes you to feel like an orphan. It prevents that revelation in you that God is your father. So Jesus said, my father, and they were upset. How dare you call God your father? He brings a revelation to people that God is your father and they want to kill him. Guess what? Nothing has changed. Today, there's a spirit that wants to kill that revelation inside us that God is our father and we relate to him as God. We relate to him as a rule maker, as a corrector, as anything else, but we don't relate to him as our father. Hallelujah. He, the spirit of orphan, that spirit of orphan, wants to prevent the revelation that God can be your father. You can go to him and and uh, you can go to him and uh, see, I relate to him as a father. Let me show you another scripture. Paul says this in 1 Corinthians 4.15. I know I did not give you all these scriptures, Caleb, so bear with me. 1 Corinthians 4.15. Paul, in his letter to the Corinthian church, he said this, we have many instructors, but very few fathers. The question is, what are you? Are you an instructor or are you a father? What have you been doing all these years? Have you been instructing your family or have you been your father? I please understand me, I'm not getting on my men's cases. No. I want to bring out a revelation. Look at that. For though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you have not many fathers. For in Christ have I begotten you. Finish the sentence. For in Christ have I begotten you through the gospel. So a father has to be birthed in Jesus. A father has to be begotten in Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. In Christ have I begotten you through the gospel. I have begotten you. I have birthed you. You are mine. The only way you can function as a father is if you are birthed in him. And that's it. Nothing else. In Christ have I begotten you. Now you look at things happening. Praise God for the women. You know the women have more help, help, helping programs than the men. You have we center for women for this. You have women, single women, mothers. You have so many programs that helps women. You know how many programs help men? Probably zero. Well, well, well. Now think about it. So they build prisons, they build many jails, they, they build prisons that to accommodate men. Yet there is no funds that go to, okay, this is a center for men. To help men. Yet prisons are increased every year if you look at the number of prisons how many prisons they build every year 
compared to how many buildings do they build that can help men? I mean men. Where men can go and say, look, I am struggling. The only time men go to struggle is they go to AAA. Hey, hey, hey. hey, hey. Oh, my name is Kerry Temba and I'm an addict. And I've been saying that for 50 years. Amen. My name is Kerry Temba and I'm an addict. Then I sit down. Next year again, my name is Kerry Temba and I'm an addict. When am I going to stop being an addict? When am I going to say, my name is Kedrick Temple and I'm delivered by the power of the Holy Ghost? I am free! I am free! When am I going to say that? If I keep confessing, my name is Kedrick Temple, I'm a drunkard. My name is... No! It's time, men, we get up and say, my name is Kedrick Temple, I am delivered by the power of the Holy Ghost, I am free! Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. See? Gabby, Gabby there is cl clapping. Gabby, thank you. I told you I won't be boring. Gabrielle, the back there, ashes. All right, now. Hallelujah. Ephesians 6, verse 1. Let me say this. You cannot be a father in your own strength. It is impossible to be a father in your own strength. You cannot be. Fathers, let me make this statement. This, this Especially you know who needs you the most? Your daughters. Fathers. Your daughters need you more than your sons do. Let me make that statement again. Your daughters need you more than your sons. You know, if you don't sit down with your daughters, if you don't hug your daughters, you don't hold your daughters, somebody else will. Now, I want you to pay attention to this. You know, the Holy Ghost is very clever. Smarter than you and me. Just in case you didn't know that, let me just say that. That's for free. Nobody has to pay for that. He's smarter than you and me. <laughs> that's why it's called the Holy Ghost. <laughs> so when he wrote the book, he did not just write the book like an essay. You know, when you used to write essays in school, that sometimes they said, oh, how many words? Or two pages. Sometimes I had to find a way of repeating something in a different way just to fill up the page. <laughs> the professor, they'll just count the words. And, okay, he's got it. Mm -hmm. The Holy Ghost is not like that. Now, I want you to pay attention to this. Verse 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. I was talking to Tim yesterday, and Tim said, this is my father's favorite scripture. Well, every, every parent, you want that to be your favorite scripture. Because it is an advantage to me. If I tell you, hey, go get me some alcohol across the street. Obey your parents. Now, what we don't see is, this is not just a parent. They are parents in the Lord. They are not just parents. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. That itself clarifies what kind of parent that person is. A parent in the Lord who will not tell you to do anything ungodly. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. So you can be a father and not a parent. There are a lot of fathers around. They are adopted kids. There are people that just donate their sperms to be a father. They have nothing to do with the father being a father of that person. But they are, they produce that child. Does that mean they are fathers? No. Alright? Children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. For this is right. 
Next verse, verse 2. Now look at that. It doesn't say obey your parents, obey your father and mother, but it says honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment, which with a promise. So now you go back. For parents, it says obey them. Parents in the Lord says obey them. Obey them. For father and mother, it says honor them. So there's a difference in honoring and obeying. So you have parents, not just parents, but parents in the Lord. This is not just a parent. This parent is in the system called Jesus. This parent will give you instructions concerning Jesus. This parent will not tell you to do anything. This parent will not abuse you. This parent will not provoke you. This parent will not touch you sexually. Will not do that. This parent is in the Lord. The parent is one that gets up early in the morning and pray. This parent is the one that you see reading the Bible. This parent is the one that you see encouraging you, encouraging you in the Lord, showing you scriptures. Yes. This is the parent. Parents in the Lord. Not just parents. Parents in the Lord. Go back to verse 1. Parents in the Lord. Obey your parents in the Lord. For this is right. We had a situation where these two wanted to get married. A man and a woman. Just to clarify. But that we have to clarify that. And the parent of a girl opposed the marriage. We went to them to ask why. They didn't have any good reason. I said, well, they love each other. And now we, the parents in the Lord, we decide they'll get married. We, the parents in the Lord, we overrode them, the father and mother. And guess what? They got married. They loved each other. They were in church. They were spiritually sound. They went through counseling. They did everything that was possible. The parents, the biological parents, did not like the guy because at one point the guy was locked up in prison. He was free. He delivered. So guess what? The parents in the Lord. We ruled. We overruled. Now, that may not sound like, oh, gosh, man, I need to get out of this church before. It is what it is. Now, a parent in the Lord. That's why we had fathers here. Parents in the Lord. Are you a parent in the Lord? What are you showing your nephews? What are you showing your sons and your daughters? What are you showing them? What kind of lifestyle are you showing them? Do they see you read the Bible? Do they see you pray? What spiritual stuff do they see you do? They have to see you do stuff. It's not for sure. We don't, you know, Pastor Bob says, we don't give to be seen, but you have to be seen giving. I have to show an example. Let me show another scripture. Colossians. Colossians 3. 18. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. 19. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Then it comes to verse 20. It says, children, Obey your parents in all things. For this is well pleasing unto the Lord. Verse 21. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. It covers it all. So many times, we are so concerned about the other person. If I'm concerned about what Cassandra is doing, why don't I why don't I do 
19. Go to back to 19. Why don't I stick my nose, my eyes, my heart, my everything in verse 19? And why don't I memorize that? Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Why don't I take that upon me and just eat it up, memorize it, study the words, husband, love, wives, study even those words and see what each of them mean. So if I pay attention to 19, now go to verse 20. No, go to verse 18. I will not have to worry about verse 18. So now, if you're a woman, if you're a woman, worry about your verse. You're not a husband. You're a wife. Look at verse 18 and eat it up. Write it down 10 times, 7 times, 17 times. You read it and pay attention on verse 18. Don't pay attention on verse 19. Read your verse. You know, there are people. We had somebody in, in where I used to work before. She was marketing. She was in marketing. But she was in everybody's business except her position. Like, why don't you? Like, look, there's no business coming in. You are the marketing person that needs to bring this business in. Why don't you go out and bring the business in? But you are so much in everybody else's business. And that's a problem. Now, because of these two verses, let's go to verse 20. What that means, we have something to do as husbands and wives. We have something to do with verse 20. Children, obey your parents in all things. How are they going to obey if they see a mother cursing out your father? How? How are they going to obey if they see a father mistreating the mother? How are they going to obey if they see a mother being bitter? How are they going to obey? They will follow what they see. Oh, um. Oh, hallelujah. So, we have something to do. We have something to do with them obeying. Go back to verse 18. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. Listen, not anybody as a, as a husband. Don't be involved in other people's husbands. Submit to your own husband. Okay? Your own husbands. Or your own husband as it is fit in the Lord. After, after the Holy Ghost says that, then he makes another statement in verse 19. He's a very fair person. Then he says, husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Do you notice that there's nowhere in the Bible really where it says, wives, love your husbands? <laughs> this Bible is uh, awesome. There's nowhere where it says, love your parents. I mean, yeah, there's a general that says, love people, you know. But as, as far as that, to submit to them, honor them. So when this is done, when the children see the example in a marriage, the love factor, the submission, the girl grows up knowing that my mom submitted to my father. The mom did not have a separate conversation when I was doing laundry and she came by, you know, your father, your father this, your father this. And dad did not have a special conversation with his son and talk about the mom. Happy Father's Day. Now you love me so much. I'll go back to John, 3, John 5. John chapter 5. Verse 16. John chapter 5, verse 16. Therefore the Jews persecuted Jesus even more. They're persecuting Jesus more. 
Therefore, did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. He had preached on Sabbath day. He healed somebody on Sabbath day. According to their law, that was not supposed to be happening. In another chapter, Jesus said to them, how many of you would let your animal die because of Sabbath? You get, it, you get it out. You know what I found out? We have excuses for a lot of things. We have excuses for prayer. We have excuses for this and that. But when something pressing, when my son is, needs me, I'll get up and go to them. But I cannot get up to pray. I cannot get up to do things that the Holy Spirit requires me to do. There's excuses for everything. Now look at the next, next verse, verse 17. Jesus answered them, like, okay, my father works and they are to, I work. They get infuriated. They get upset. That spirit in them gets angered. How dare you call God the father? That spirit is there today. And that spirit is the one that causes fathers not to love their family. That spirit is there today that, that, that will cause fathers not to influence their kids, their children. Look at the next verse, verse 18. That spirit speaks. That is talking. Therefore the Jews sought them all to kill him. They, so that spirit is there today to kill the revelation that God is your father. That's what it does. It wants to kill that revelation. Yes, yes you can have God as your God. I, oh God, you can have that. In God we trust. You can have that. as his father listening to him being that comfortable with your father you know I saw a father and this is my, my, my spiritual father I, I was at the house at, at Rachel's house and Rachel had then she, she had, remember her neck was hairy so Pastor Bob was Massaging her neck. As a father. You know, the world has made that look so awkward. Well, well. It makes, because of other fathers, because of the perverted fathers, they've made that look so awkward. And I look and said, wow, that's a father. That's a father. You know, it's time, fathers. You went out with your ba with your baby girls. Go to dinner, just you and them, you and her. Open a door for her. Buy flowers for that girl. Let us see that my father loves me. Hallelujah. Talk about deeper things with your daughter. You know how many girls learn about sex outside? Because it's awkward for a father to sit down with a daughter and talk about that. Yet, it's an issue. It is a real issue. Someone will, tell, will teach about that. And that someone will not have good intentions. It's you, the father, to say, listen, honey, this is real. But we leave these topics to Oprah. We leave these topics to Dr. Phil. We leave these topics to Ellen, whatever the name is. We leave these topics to the world to teach them. And then they come around and tell you, I don't know what I am, whether I'm a man or a woman. How stupid is that? We, are, we leave it to some schools that are teaching these kids when they are, when they are little kids, they're teaching them that stuff. Now, do you really think they're teaching them things of God? No. 
Fathers, it's time to arise. It's time to arise. It's time to arise. It's time to arise. Now, here's my last point. Fathers, you are not just the husband to that woman that you are married to. You are a father to her. You are a father to her. Now, I'm not saying you go home and uh, be called Father, Father Roy. <laughs> Listen to me, Liz. I'm a father, okay? <laughs> but remember that. Go back to Genesis 17. Verse 5. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abraham, but thy name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. Nations have I made thee. Includes everybody. So a father has to get up in the morning and be heard. Your kids must hear you pray. Your kids must see you meditate on the word. You can't just make these things like normal. You are the prayer warrior of your house. It starts with you. It ends with you as fathers. Sign up. Sign up in emails that talks about fathers. They will send you emails. Today, there are podcasts that you can listen to. Now choose what to listen to. Don't just listen to everything. Because put that, uh, Kelly, put the, those numbers that I gave you. Why do you think? Why do you think you have over one million people in prison? Why? One million people? Men? A million? Some nations like Bahamas probably don't even have a million people total. A million people. If they, those million people, if each, if each of them paid a dollar in taxes, that's a million, a million bucks. Just a dollar in taxes. That's a million bucks. That, what does that do to the economy? It. Why is the world building more prisons than building rehabilitation centers and places that will help men? Men, it's time to take up your swords. It's time to take up your swords. It's time to take up your swords. And declare that, Lord, I am your man. I am your man. I'm not going to stand by. I'm not going to stand behind. I'm going to stand for you. I'm going to pray. I'm going to partner with you. God takes the name Father. And he gives it to you and me. That title of a father. He gives it to a man. That's why if two women get married, no matter how much they cut themselves, no matter how much they make themselves, no matter how much they shave their hair, no matter how much they walk, no matter how much they punch, pump themselves with some medication, that woman is still a woman and will never be a father. And with all the love I have for the great gay community. Now listen to me. If you are listening, if you are a woman, am I to a woman, you will never be a father. That is just it. You can ask your daughter, your granddaughter, your two-year-old whether if you want. You will never be a father. It is what it is. Hallelujah. You can send me emails afterwards. So now, I'm a man. 
the best influence I can give, better than I can give to my son, is to my daughters. I want you to hear this, man. Mothers, they can influence our sons in the best way because they have something that we don't have. So, get closer to your daughters. Get closer to your sons. Train them. Teach them. Sit down. Read the Bible together. Make them memorize scriptures. Show them how to love by loving your wife. Practically. Intentionally. Hug your wife. Kiss your wife in front of them. They may say, ew, daddy. <laughs> you know why they're saying that? They haven't been seeing it. But if they've been seeing it since you are babies, they've seen you kiss your wife, it won't be awkward to them. Right. You know, I told my little, my little girl, Charlie, I said, Charlie, you have two boyfriends, your daddy and me. That's it. Okay? The only boys you kiss is Gogo and your daddy. That's it. You are five years old. And she said, okay. Let me end by this. I know I've ended twice now. <laughs> Genesis 17. Thanks, Caleb. 17. Verse 5. Your name has been changed. You're not just a father to your kids. You're a father to many nations. But the last part there says, for a father of many nations have I made thee. Have I made thee. The question is, how ready are you to go through a process of being made? He's making you. What is he making you into? How much are you willing to leave the things that is catching, cutting away from you? How much are you willing to do that? Put the last part there. For many, for have I made thee? I made thee. I made thee. I made thee. Is making me. And the thing about human beings, the making, Sister Melissa, is not one day. It's every day. Every day I wake up, he makes me. Every day I wake up, he cuts some things away from me. That's why Jesus is a carpenter by trade. So he has to file. He has to sand me down. He sees that one day my elbow is scratching somebody else. My speech is scratching other people. He has to sand it down. My, my attitude is hitting people. He has to sand my attitude down. Why? That is his profession. He's a carpenter. Make me. We sing songs. Make me a vessel. Make me an offering. Make me what you want me to be. Sometimes we have no idea what that means. Do I really want to sit down and be made? You know some kids like, make me. Like, do that. Make me. Make me. Well, we never used to say that growing up. Because I knew what to make me is a slap or a pop in your mouth. What did you say? Pop. Say that one more time. I'm not promoting violence, but that's just the way some of us got it. Or just rolling your eyes. Like, what did you say? Oh, I didn't say anything. Oh, come here, come here. What did, are you lying? Oh, uh, I'll, I'll do it. Yeah, I thought so. Or you, <laughs> you, you know, even just like, huh. you know, I don't know parents then they, were, they moved so much in the Holy Ghost that they will catch you of anything you do that is contrary. Like, oh, say that one more time. 
Oh, I, I'm going to do it. Oh, I thought so. Today, we have all these organizations that defends that. Hallelujah. Men, like I said, love your wives. Love your children. Love people around you. Raise up a generation because you are a father of many nations. And remember, you are not just a parent, but you are a parent in the Lord. That's it. In the Lord. That's what qualifies to be a parent. If you are not in the Lord, you are a parent in something else. And you cannot parent anybody unless you are in the Lord. Amen? Amen. Worship team, come back, please. We're going to receive... Um, worship team, come up. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Now, fathers, you've heard the message. You are a man. Jesus came as a man. It's not, it's not to be unfair to called the Eve movement. Like, what in the world is that? Your husband, your boyfriend, whatever that man is in your life, honor them. They're not perfect. Oh my God, if that was a qualification for standing here, nobody will preach. Because I'll be far away from ministering to anybody if perfection was a requirement. My perfection is in the Lord. Most of you, you know me. You know the things that you know I can say. If you are told that Pastor Kerry cursed out a person, you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's him. Yeah, I'm sure I did. You wouldn't even say I did. Because I am who I am. I seek the Lord. I bless the Lord. I live the best way I can. I'm not asking fathers to be perfect. I'm asking fathers to, to stand and get your sword. I'm asking fathers to be fathers in the Lord. I'm asking men of God to arise. Hallelujah. Amen. So I need, in fact, men, I know we honored you. Stand again. Just stand again. Just men, stand. Every man in here, stand. Every man in here, stand. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Every man stand. Every man stand. Stand. If you are a man, if you are a boy, stand. Every man, every boy, stand. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Stretch your hands to them again one more time. And I want you to pray. If you can lay hands on them, lay hands on them. Women, lay hands on your people, on your brothers and sisters, or on your brothers, or your husbands, or your cousins. Lay hands on them. And I want you to pray that, Lord, make him. Make him what you want him to be. Make him. Make me a vessel. Make me what you want me to be. Make them, Lord. Make these men of God what you want them to be. Make them, oh God, what you want them to be, Father. In the name of Jesus, Father, excel them. Let them excel in strength. Let them excel in everything they do, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Father. Let them excel spiritually, oh God. Let them excel emotionally. Let them excel financially, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Father. Oh, we thank you, oh Lord. And we bless your name, Jehovah. Let them excel, oh God. Let them excel. Let them excel. Let them excel in the name of Jesus. Let them excel, oh Jehovah. Let them excel. Let them excel. Exhalation. Let them excel, oh God. Let them excel in the name of Jesus, oh God. Father, let them excel. 
Let them excel. Let them excel in you, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. Let them excel. Let them excel, Jehovah. Let them excel, O oh God, in all things. Let them excel. Oh, thank you, Lord. 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 In the name of Jesus. Let them excel. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. And now I want you to, if you prayed for a man, I want you to get their names. And this week, you will be praying for them. I want you to find scriptures that you'll be praying for them. For God to make them. I have made thee. I have made thee. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands at them and say this. Lord, God has made you. God has made you. A man of God. God has made you. A man of God. A man of God. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's very important that we pray for our men. Amen? Hallelujah. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to receive... No, let me, let me say this first. You are a man. I know we don't have any new people here. You are a man. You are not a man in the Lord. You are not in the Lord. And you know it. You know you're not in the Lord. You are a father, but you're not in the Lord. You are a parent, but you're not in the Lord. If that's you, by show of hand, you're saying, help me to be in the Lord. Anybody in here? Help me to be in the Lord. I'm not in yet. I need to get in. I need a key to get in the Lord. Hallelujah. If that's you, by raising your hand, you're saying, Kedrick, help me to get in. Hallelujah. And I'll help you to get in. Is there a person here? Praise the Lord. Oh, happy Father's Day to you. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to give to the Lord and then we'll go to these gifts. If you need an envelope, please just raise your hand. I know some people give online like I do. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We're going to give. And before you even write your checks, I want, I want you to write in the back of an envelope. I want you to write, Happy Father's Day. This is a Father's Day gift to the Lord. Hallelujah. This is a Father's Day gift to the Lord. So whatever you are giving, you can give extra. And just indicate that this is a Father's Day gift to Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Um, wives, daughters, treat your fathers today. Treat them right. And please don't use their credit card <laughs> that they gave you before you went to high school and you kept it. <laughs> you know, don't use their credit card. <laughs> like your dad, I'm taking you to dinner. And then you use your credit card. That doesn't use your credit card, okay? Use your money to give to buy them gifts. Hallelujah. If you're writing a check, just write it to C O H C or Corn of Hope. You know what I said, husband? Um, do I say wives? Yeah, wives. It's one credit card anyway. But daughters, take your fathers for lunch. We don't have evening service today at the main church. We don't have that. So it's time for you to spend time with them. You know the best gift for Father's Day? Golf. For golfers. 
<laughs> buy, buy them a round of golf at Fazis. It's quite expensive, but no, my, my daughter Kennedy, she texts me and said, what do you want your father as the gift? I said, well, be honest, I want uh, the latest uh, tell me drive. So she Googled it. I said, it's 600 dollars. Like, well. <laughs> it's 600 dollars. Like, well. You asked me, I said anything. No, what do you want? I said anything. No, what do you want? I said, well, if you insist. But you know what? She bought me very good gifts. She bought me very, very good gifts. And I'm grateful to my daughters. I'm grateful. Amen. So far, uh, daughters, sons, don't let this day go by without you giving your father a gift. Please, Casey, Timothy, take your daddy to dinner. And Gerald, buy the most expensive thing on the, on the menu. <laughs> this is not a time to be casual and to say, oh, no. <laughs> Just order two plates. <laughs> and keep one for tomorrow. <laughs> Christian, treat your dad. Amen. This is the only day that we enjoy. We get to be boss as fathers. So we're not bosses all the time. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. But we're going to give to Jesus. We're going to give to the king of glory. We're going to give to the Father that loves us so much. That loves us beyond, beyond our biological fathers. We're going to give to him. But at the same time, don't forget to honor your father here on earth. Amen? Your biological father, your stepfather, your parent in the Lord. Your parent, the one that takes care of you pays for your bills, has watched you, everything. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Are we ready to give? Can you put those confessions on, please? Hallelujah, we're going to stand. Do you have them ready? We're going to stand and we're going to confess. Hallelujah. And let's confess one, two, three, go. Lord Jesus, I come into your house, not empty-handed. By bringing my tithe and offering, I go to Malachi 3.10. The window of heaven are open to me. Blessing and poured out that I cannot contain. The devourer is rebuked for my sake. This year is a coordination of a better job, promotion, raises, bonus and benefits. This is opportunity, sales, commission, increases, rebates, settlements and checks in the mail favor, interest, royalties, and scholarship, give surprise and no found monies. Using wisdom and self-control in my spending, my bills are decreasing and my income is increasing. I have anointing for blessing. Give me to be a giver for the kingdom of God. All my needs are met and there is no lack. I have power to create wealth. The favor of God is upon me and everything I put my hands to will prosper. I'm chief giver, so a good ground that is bringing souls into the kingdom of God. And my God is supplying all my needs. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Also put, put uh, Second Samuel 3 verse 1. We're going to confess that again. Second Samuel 3. Hallelujah. Read, let's read one, two, three, go. Now there was a long war between the house of Saul and the house of David. But David worked stronger and stronger and the house of Saul works weaker and weaker. Put it back again. Start, let's start over. Now there was a long war between the house of Saul and the house of David. But David worked stronger and stronger and the house of Saul works weaker and weaker. Now raise your hand and say, Lord Jesus, I'm waxing stronger and stronger in everything, in my, in my finances, in my body, 
in my family, in my health. I'm waxing stronger and stronger in Jesus' name. I'm waxing stronger in everything in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. 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 You may be seated. Hallelujah. This is our month. This is our scripture in June. I want you to go and read it. Memorize it. Because I want us to confess it every, every Sunday. And all you guys that preach here, Roy, Pastor um, Gloria and all, if you are preaching, don't forget to confess that scripture. That is a scripture that has been given to the church. We are waxing stronger. We are waxing stronger in our marriages. We are waxing stronger in everything. We are waxing stronger in every way. We are waxing stronger. Amen? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. that you give is 100% daily and I love how he grows you and how he stretches you and I love that about you and what I never learned from my father I have learned so much from you and how precious you are I thank you we thank you we thank you and we love you and this is just a, a little token. <laughs> and then there's banana pudding in the for you. Yes. We love you. Well, thank you. You know, there are people that mean so much. Not that everybody doesn't mean that, you know, you mean so much. But people like Karen and Brian. I've known Karen forever. You know, Brian and Karen, I've known them forever. One of the memorable, memorable events with Karen, we, pr we, we prayed for somebody and that person died. <laughs> now everybody like, oh gosh, I don't want to be prayed by, for you by you. We prayed for a person and that person died. Died. Now what do you do? You call 911? The eyes, you remember that guy? The eyes were white like she was gone. The spirit of death killed her. We were praying for her and the spirit spoke out of her mouth. She said, it's too late, I've already killed her. After that, she was gone. She stood with us. We prayed and prayed and that person came back to life. So Karen Brand, I'll, I'll never forget that because that was what the time where you started thinking, what am I going to do? Before you close it and we uh, get something from. So again, thank you for so many of you. You've helped us to grow to grow as a father, to grow as pastors, you've helped us. So thank you. And I think that deserves a big hand to the Lord just for you guys. <laughs> Amen. And I'm grateful to fathers of this house. You know, every time I look at people like Sean, how he loves his kids, 
you know, you look at fathers and you say, wow, Brian and all, Gerald, thank you. Thank you for all those, you know, Roy, thank you for being fathers. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. All right, I'll let you go. Um, we're going to give these gifts, but uh, I need, uh, you may be seated. I promise you, I won't, we're not playing chairs. Stand, sit, stand, sit. Um, Tom, come on. Yes, I'm talking to you. <laughs> Tony, 